What is going on in today's video? I'm going to be showing you guys the best settings to run here in Modern Warfare 3. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like for the algorithm, subscribe, notifications turned on, and let's hop into this. All right, so getting into this here, as you guys can see in the top corner, I am indeed on PC, a controller on PC, but I want to give you guys the settings that pretty much everyone can use. So that includes like controller settings, stuff like that, and some graphical settings, but we're going to go over controller settings here first. So first thing in here is going to be your, obviously your aiming input device, which is going to be your controller. It doesn't matter if on mouse or keyboard but this will largely be a lot more controller based so um our edit button layout we're gonna go down here for the first thing and this is pretty much gonna be left as is i happen to play with a scuff controller aka i have the paddles on the back i pretty much just leave this on tactical flip i don't feel like i have to mess around with any different buttons and switch out for some custom button combinations for me personally i don't really need that i just like playing on tactical flip that way you know my joysticks and my circle are going to be switched around so my pretty much my melee and my slide is going to be right there and that is huge in this game particularly because we have slide canceling here once again um now we're going to go down here and we're going to run that bumper ping is going to be on off obviously my flip l2 and r2 is going to be flipped because i play on tactical flipped i prefer to use the top triggers i came all the way back from the era of playstation 3 and of course on ps3 on call of duty uh that was pretty much like you know we always use the top ones anyways and the bottom ones are always for lethal and tactical so i've gotten very very used to that here on call of duty and i've stuck with it ever since it's not right or wrong but realistically speaking, pressing in these top little buttons right here probably is a little bit faster to get them to press in than sometimes getting the bottom triggers. For me, I just like that, and that is a personal preference thing. You guys can be fine one way or the other. Your stick layout preset can be on default. That is totally fine. Uh, your controller vibration, that is going to be a personal thing. I've just always had it on. It does not mess up my aim at all. It just feels kind of natural to me, so I just have it right there. Um, the trigger effect is off this is definitely not a personal preference thing you should never have the haptic feedback on for a call of duty multiplayer that is not acceptable we do not need it to make it make it more difficult to press in the trigger that is not the feedback we need we need to be able to have everything be as split second and fast as possible and that is definitely not going to be possible when you happen to have those full haptics so keep that straight up on off now our dead zone to input this is actually a really cool feature here now within this game so my dead zone actually like you can actually test your dead zone so i'll show you guys here in a second but my left stick minimum is at a zero and my right stick is at a zero i play on a straight up zero zero dead zone and that's because if i actually show you guys my test dead zones right here I almost have virtually no stick drift with this controller. If you happen to have a little bit of stick drift, that's gonna make your life a little bit more difficult, but actually in this game, there is no tuning. So, because they actually went ahead and removed it, there's like literally no tuning for any of the Modern Warfare 3 guns or the MW2 guns that are gonna be in this game or that are in this game. So you don't really have to worry about that for that tuning purpose, which is super sick. But uh, if you have a little bit of stick drift, you're gonna wanna probably mess with it just a little bit. AKA you're gonna wanna have maybe maybe like a one or two or something else like that. Just something very, very minor. But the lower to zero or the closer to zero you can get it, the more true real-time feedback you're gonna get when you're playing the game. And that is pretty crucial when you're trying to make those split second decisions and those quick reactions to be able to keep alive. So now let's move on over here to the aiming category. So uh, I've been have this on my horizontal and vertical on a six, six sensitivity. I believe a 6.6 six sensitivity is perfectly fine. Um, it is fast enough for me to be able to move around and be able to look around, but it's also not too fast to the point where I'm overcorrecting my shots and starting to miss those shots. And speaking of that, my ADS sensitivity multiplier is another huge thing here within this. So I don't play it a straight 1.0. I play this at a 0.80. And what that does is give me a 0.8 of my 6.6 six sensitivity. So it actually slows me down a little bit more so, thus making it harder for me to miss those shots and combining that with good aim assist and good aim assist settings and actually just kind of being good anyways, uh, I'm actually gonna have some really nice accuracy and that is huge in this game. Gotta be able to hit those shots. So sensitivity multiplier, this is just gonna be left at a 1.0. I'll just leave that right there. Uh, vertical aim axis, I mean, this is just all standard stuff. Now I'm gonna move on down here. Tax stance, sensitivity multiplier. You guys can have this at pretty much whatever you want. I mean, it is what it is. I don't really like that tax stance. I'm gonna have to turn this off of it as possible at some point, uh, but otherwise pretty much just leave that at 1.0. A response curve type is gonna be on dynamic. So we have a couple options in here for standard, linear, and dynamic. And dynamic, pretty much what it does is it gives you that S curve. So like when you think about it like that, just like a giant S curve when you're actually gonna be, you know, aiming in. So it allows it for that S 
that quick ramp up so that six six sensitivity i get that full six right there but as soon as i start to peek over you know i start to you know crank down on the stick a little bit it will start to slow down so that way it doesn't allow me to overcorrect when i'm trying to look around or acquire a target etc like that so i believe dynamic is definitely the way to go though if you really like linear it's not like you know the end of the world i just think dynamic is gonna allow you to have that nice sticky aim I really enjoy it, so definitely do that. I even played with it all on Modern Warfare 2. A lot of my settings obviously transferred over from MW2 to this game. Uh, my aim response group, slope scale is just on a 1.0. I haven't had to mess with this at all, uh, so you guys can definitely just leave that at a 1.0. Um, ADS sensitivity multiplier is just at a 1.0. Of course, this transition timing is on instant. We do not want there to be any sort of delay, anything else like that. You want it to be instantaneous on your sensitivity transition timing no, like no ifs ands or buts about that that is not a negotiable uh, custom sensitivity presume is off we don't need that um, that just kind of complicates things and to be honest with you guys no one's going to be using pretty much anything outside of like maybe at maximum a three to four times scope in this game if you're going to be playing like you know like a ground war or something like that at that point like you can use something but even then you don't need to have a custom sensitivity presume i just think that's kind of pointless i've never played with that i don't believe it's beneficial you guys can try it if you want to but i don't think it's good uh aim assist is going to be of course just target aim assist on i do need that on that is it is there for a reason on controller it's not as broken as it was in modern warfare 2 which is actually a good thing because that was ungodly sticky um, aim assist type is on black ops so black ops aim assist is what has been traditionally known in modern warfare 2 as the stickiest aim assist they kind of buffed it they nerfed it and then they kind of buffed it again i've been sticking with black ops and i get called out for hacking sticky aim soft aim walls chronus ds4 windows i get called out for this stuff all the time and that's because my aim looks really good so i be sticking with that black ops i'm telling you it makes your aim really really solid so definitely go for that third person ads correction type is going to be on assist and then of course your motion sensor aiming all this stuff is just off you could probably have some advanced settings i guess if you really want to i haven't messed with any of that now into the gameplay category tab here for automatic sprint i have it on automatic tax sprint that pretty much allows me to save my controller a little bit without having to constantly mash in that button and that's huge when you want to you know talk about not getting stick drift the less you mash in your button the less you mash in your stick the less you're actually going to get stick drift from that wear and tear so automatic tax sprint is definitely the way to go auto move forward is off um tactical sprint behaviors is on double tap grounded mantle and automatic airborne mantle is going to be on off you do not want any of this stuff to be automatic as you can see by the pictures right here that are going to be you know on this right side of the screen when you're mantling something like you want that to be a conscious effort you want to physically go up to something and make the effort to mantle it we don't want to randomly be jump shotting something else like that like for instance this grounded mantle right here imagine your jump shot next to this you know this little construction thing right here i forget what it's called but anyways you guys get what i'm saying imagine you're next to this thing and all of a sudden your character wants to randomly side mantle it because you're next to it and you've pressed x or whatever the button is for you on on xbox so i don't think that is good i mean i i don't like that so that's why i have that completely off it eliminates me from having any stupidity in my gunfights apart from stuff that's already going to be in the game uh, automatic ground mantling is going to be on off slide behavior is on tap to slide because obviously in this game we have slide canceling back which is really huge and it's a nice little movement mechanic we can use so tap to slide is definitely what you guys want to have it on right there uh plunging underwater i didn't think you're really going to need that but just on trigger uh, parachute auto play plane only sprinting door bash on and some of this other stuff down here slide cancel sprint got to have that on that is a pretty crucial setting uh definitely definitely should have that on and it says press r3 to slide cancel sprint which allows you to crouch aka that's what allows you to do the slide cancel and because we're playing on tactical flipped mine is r3 that button is r3 for me because it switched out my melee over to circle so that's why it is r3 but aim down sight behavior is of course going to be on hold change zoom activation uh that's kind of is what it is right there equipment behavior you guys can see some of the stuff down here of course your interact reload behavior is going to be on tap to reload which is just what you should be playing on if you're playing warzone for you know when obviously uh the next in integration happens prioritize interact which is going to be the way to go for that but otherwise tap to reload is what you guys want to be sticking on here for multiplayer so you don't accidentally start picking up guns off the ground i'd much prefer to like just tap to reload make my life super simple as opposed to like having to you know accidentally pick something up because there's a lot of guns on the ground in multiplayer 
uh, armor plate behaviors just on apply all and all the rest of the stuff down here you guys can kind of do whatever you want with it's not going to be the end of the world and there's no real specific things honestly I haven't really touched any of it. Now, in the graphics section here, we're going to be using stuff that is basically universally uh, usable to everyone. I'm not going to go into my display and quality stuff because I'm on PC and everyone's got, if you're playing on PC, a different build. It's not beneficial. So we're going to show you guys here what you should be using. So field of view, I firmly believe everyone should be playing on 120 field of view as long as it doesn't like weird you out, may, like make your game just feel odd or give you some... I don't like a motion sickness. I feel like you should probably be playing on 120. I've been playing on it for forever. And I have seen people say that, you know, 120 makes you lose aim assist or something like that. You got to play on 119. That is not a thing. That is a myth. That, I don't know. Someone must have spread that around on TikTok or whatever. But that is not a thing. Just playing 120. You don't lose aim assist. Um, your ADS field of view is going to be unaffected. Uh, that is to make it so that when you are playing on 120, it doesn't zoom you back out to or zoom you in, my bad, to 80 FOV. So, like, that is a real glaring difference. We go back up here. Imagine looking at this field of view right here going from 120, and then as soon as you ADS, you zoom into 80, and that is all you can see. That's actually, frankly, ridiculous. So, stay unaffected. It also makes your guns look like they have less visual recoil, but in this game, there's hardly any visual recoil which is fantastic we absolutely love that in comparison to modern warfare 2 i mean this game is literally everything that modern warfare 2 is not in a very good way so now we're gonna move on down here weapon field of view can be on default um i don't really think you need to have it on wide that just makes the gun appear bigger on your screen either default or narrow is going to be perfectly fine i just keep this on 90 vehicle field of view is going to be on default and down here your world motion blur and your weapon motion blur should both be set to off no reason to have those things on that's just going to make it so that it's harder for you to pick out targets around you uh, maybe the, like the weapon motion blur is not the end of the world but definitely world motion blur keep that off you need to be able to see what's going on around you i mean you got to be able to pick out those targets you know what i'm saying uh film grain is definitely got to be on a zero as well no reason to have this at a 0.25 which is what it tells me to reset it to that is just not something we need don't need more film grain got to make the game super clear and of course down here first and third person camera movement got to keep that to the least aka 50 percent and everything else down here doesn't really matter too much you can keep the inverter flashbang on or off it's totally up to you and for our last thing here today i want to take you guys into the interface category because this will actually make your game look better and i didn't want to just be straight into the tab so what we're going to do is we're going to go straight down in here to the color customization so this is a pretty underrated sort of or underlooked tab that people don't mess with so your hud color palette this is what will determine obviously how things look on your map you can totally change it to be whatever you want i think personally the default is really not all that bad but here are some things you definitely should be changing we're gonna move on down here you can go for the color filter settings and this is where you should pay attention so first thing is going to be put that on filter 2 we've been running filter 2 since modern warfare 2 and this is how we've kept it and it really makes everything just look a little bit more vibrant definitely recommend filter 2 color filter target should be set to both you want that to apply to everything and your world color intensity should be at 100 and as well as interface color intensity should be at 100. this will make your game seem just a little bit more vibrant and make it easier to be able to pick out things in game trust me i'm telling you this makes a bit of a difference and it's definitely something you should do and it's not going to affect your so in-game performance in any capacity so it's definitely something you guys should be using huge huge benefits to doing this and just a couple more things to kind of finish this out your mini map shape uh, you guys can see the difference between circle and square square is going to be literally bigger you guys should always be playing on a square mini map no reason to play on anything else besides a square mini map uh, mini map rotation should be on on horizontal compass should be on on you guys can see right here my crosshairs are off but that is because i actually have this great thing called the center dot which for me works out incredibly well in helping me center and making sure that i'm just like very center most portion of my screen i'm able to you know be looking in the doorway as it shows here within the picture but definitely recommend to keep that on if you're going to go without a crosshair and put the center dot on largest I've been rocking with this for a while now, and this is a personal thing. I really enjoy it. You don't have to do it. You can keep your crosshairs on, but if you are going to keep them on, keep them on static. So they're always in one specific location. They don't get bigger, smaller, et cetera, et cetera. Just keep them on static if you are going to run that. But otherwise, that is pretty much going to be that. If you guys enjoyed my settings, be sure to give it a like. Subscribe to the notifications turned on. Check out this other video on screen, and I'll see you all next time.